Well, let me just say how very pleased I am to be here. The, uh, the hors d'oeuvre before the main event, which starts in about three minutes. But I wanted to, uh, I look around and I see many familiar faces. And I wanted to just tell you that the elections this fall are absolute priority in terms of our administration goals. I will be doing everything I can with the advice of the Congressional Campaign Committee, so I will be ha headed by Guy Vanderjack and also the Senate Committee. And the way it works in, for the Vice President's schedule, my schedule, is to kind of coordinate things with them and then with Mitch Daniels. I don't know if Mitch is here, but I'm sure you've met him or know of him or know him, and he is our very able political boss here in the White House. And so some of what I do is, most of it, if it has to do with politics, is coordinated with him. And uh, I hope that I can be as helpful to as many people here in the fall as possible. I know I want to. I've traveled almost, we'd come out of it, uh, but it was hard to prove that because we really hadn't begun the massive job recovery that's taken place since then. And secondly, the president, though relatively strong in terms of pre other presidents, uh, was somewhere around, what was it, 47, 48, 50 percent and varied from your, one of your states to another. This year, we are in the midst of the longest recovery in modern history, and you have a president standing between 70 and 75 percent in the polls. That isn't as important as it would be in a, in a presidential year, but it's still a tremendously important ingredient. So the two things that we were bucking against in 1982 are working not against at 47, but, but relatively are strongly for us this time. And the other thing is I think that uh, the people are, are supportive of what we're trying to do in, in foreign affairs. I think they see a record of accomplishment. I know that in spite of some revisionistic criticism, the people are still, and, and Bob, uh, Dick Worthen will tell you this, or Bob Teeter, still strongly supportive of what the president did in Libya. There was, as I say, some revision, but people still plugging away, recognizing that the United States, if not us, who in terms of protecting uh, our citizens around the world. And so we're going to have a few major foreign policy things. That's one of them. Uh, I think you're going to see progress in the, in the Soviet relationship. I know the world's crying out for that. There, there's no change in Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, the, Surprise guest, not such a surprise, will be announced. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. He said you were a friendly audience. <laughs> well, welcome to the White House and a special hello to your chairman, Guy Vanderjack. Today I have a feeling I'm like the veteran that's talking to the troops who are being shipped off to the front. <laughs> anyway, well, if there's any direction I can give you, well, I could, the only thing I can think of is that now with the Senate and the House both on television, some of them asked me the other day if due to my background if I had any suggestions or tips about television. And uh, as candidates, you'll be around the TV camera, so I'll tell you what I told them. Learn your lines, don't bump into the furniture, and in the kissing scenes, keep your mouth closed. <laughs> political battle all of you are about to wage has much more significance than simply who will represent a local congressional seat, although that, of course, is important. But broader issues are, are being determined by the voters. If only eight votes would have changed a few months ago, support for the Nicaraguan freedom fighters would have been approved. 
the long-term security of the United States and the freedom and stability of all Central Americas being determined by a very few votes. By doing your best to capture the mandate of the voters, you'll be making the difference on crucial issues like the one I just described. Our economic issues are no less significant. There's still those in Congress who are anxious to raise taxes and get back to the days of profligate spending. Again, these paramount economic questions are often decided by just a few votes. By doing your best to get elected, you're helping to direct the course our country will take. It's either forward with more growth-oriented, responsible economic policies, or back into the mire of inflation, pessimism, and decline. One of the greatest reasons for optimism is that we have every reason to believe the people will back us up if we give them the facts. But getting the facts to them is up to us. Thomas Jefferson once said, if a nation expects to be ignorant and free, it expects what never was and never will be. So during the upcoming campaign, be bold. Speak with a loud, clear voice. Make certain the voters know where you stand and where the differences are with your opponent. On a whole range of issues, appointing tough-minded judges, holding down spending, refusing to raise taxes, remaining firm towards Soviet expansionism, the list goes on. We Republicans are in tune with the deep-seated beliefs of the American people. We Republicans have a fundamentally different approach to solving this country's problems than those in the other party. The other side believes that progress comes from harnessing the energies of the people and focusing it on the pressing problems of the day. Well, the bottom line of that philosophy is bigger government, more bureaucracy, and higher taxes. For our side, we believe the best thing that can be done to move America forward is to free the energies of our people, liberating them to meet from the bottom up and from many different directions the challenges that confront our country. Central planning and your bureaucracy are not the answers. If that worked, we'd be importing food from the Soviet Union, not the other way around. You know, there's a story that I like to tell. I, I can't collect stories that I can prove or establish are told by the Russian people among themselves, which kind of shows their cynicism about their system. And this one is about the commissar that visited one of their state collective farms, grabbed the first workman that came by and said, uh, how are things? Any complaints? Oh, he said, comrade commissar, no one complains. Well, he said, how are the crops? He said, the crops never better, just great. He said, what about potatoes? He said, comrade commissar, if the potatoes were put in one pile, they would reach the foot of God. And the commissar said, this is the Soviet Union. There is no God. He said, that's all right. There are no potatoes. <laughs> I hope when you go out to harvest your votes, each of you will be blessed with the bounty. I know that the Republican Party is going to teach you some techniques of political farming. And I know that the other side tends to use a lot of certain kind of natural fertilizer when they're farming for votes. <laughs> I, uh, you see, I can speak with authority because I once was a Democrat. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I thought as a child. <laughs> Don't get caught short. You know, anything happens unexpected, like out there, just take advantage of it. I was the Republican candidate once that was out stumping the, the district, and the only place for him to stand for the crowd on a farm where he had, was speaking was a pile of that fertilizer. And he opened his remarks with it was the first time he had ever delivered a speech standing on the Democratic platform. <laughs> Well, we've ushered in an era of goodwill, I think, economic growth, low inflation. We have every reason to be proud of what we've accomplished. And we need each of you here to ensure America keeps more moving forward. So believe me, I wish you good luck, and I'll try to be of much help as I possibly can out there. And I know George will too, and has been already. And now, he and I are gonna do something else that. I I know is yet to come, and we hope will be helpful. We're both going in 
couple of rooms over there, and we're going to have our pictures taken with you. And uh, if you think the pictures won't help, we'll just hide them away someplace. <laughs>